Hello everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will discuss important questions of mechanical operations, which are mostly asked in an interview. If you know the answer to any question, please comment in the comment box. And if you like my video, Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel which is Chemical Idda. So let's see the questions. Define unit operations. So, the operations carried out in the chemical process industry, involving physical changes in the materials handled or in the system under consideration are called as unit operations these are physical in nature that means unit operations involving physical changes and each single operation such as distillation can be used in a wide range of industries under varying operating conditions now next question. State various types of unit operations. The various types of unit operations are mechanical operations like size reduction, conveying, filtration, then fluid flow operations in which the pressure difference acts as a driving force, then heat transfer operations in which the temperature difference acts as a driving force like evaporation and mass transfer operations in which the concentration difference acts as a driving force like distillation now next question which separation techniques are used to separate heterogeneous mixture so the separation techniques to separate heterogeneous mixtures are to separate solids from solids separation techniques like screening electrostatic separation and magnetic separation are used then to separate solids from solids in liquids separation techniques like jigging flotation classification and tabling are used then to separate solids from liquids separation techniques like filtration and sedimentation are used then to separate solids or liquid drops from gases separation techniques like gravity settling centrifugal separation or settling filtration and electrostatic precipitation are used then to separate liquids from liquids separation techniques like gravity decanter centrifugal decanter are used now next question what is the size reduction so size reduction refers to an operation wherein particles of solids are cut or broken into smaller pieces that means size reduction is a mechanical process in which breakdown of solids into smaller size particles without altering the state of aggregation of solids take place hence it is also called comminution solids are reduced in size by compression impact attrition and cutting now next question which methods are used for side reduction so for size reduction various methods are used first method is compression so compression method is used for the cost reduction of hard solids to yield relatively few fines then next method is impact Impact gives coarse, medium, or fine products. Then the next method is attrition or rubbing. 
Attrition gives very fine products from soft, non-abrasive materials. Then another method is cutting. So cutting produces a product of a definite particle size and sometimes a definite shape with few or no fines. Now next question. State Rittinger's Law. So, Rittinger's Law states that the work required for the crushing operation is directly proportional to the new surface created. Mathematically, the law can be written as P divided by M dot is equal to KR into 1 divided by DSB minus 1 divided by DSA where P is equal to power required by machine M dot is equal to feed rate to machine KR is a constant which is known as Rittinger's constant and DSB and DSA is equal to volume surface mean diameter of the feed and product Now next question. State Kick's Law. So, Kick's Law states that the work required for the crushing a given material is proportional to the logarithm of the ratio between the initial and final diameters. Mathematically, the law can be written as P divided by M dot is equal to KK into LN of D divided by D. Where P is equal to power required by machine. M is equal to feed rate to machine. KK is constant which is known as Kick's constant. And D and D is equal to initial and final size of material. Since the energy required is directly related to the reduction ratio that is d divided by d the energy required to crush a given quantity of material from a 100 mm size to a 50 mm size is the same as that required to reduce the particle size from 12 mm to 6 mm now next question what are limitations of Kick's law and Rittinger's law? The limitations of Kick's law and Rittinger's law are Both Kick's law and Rittinger's law are applicable only over limited ranges of particle size. They have limited utility and mainly of historical interest. Kick's law is more accurate than Rittinger's law. For cause crushing, where the amount of surface produced is considerably less. Now next question. State Bond's Law. So, Bond's Law states that the work required to form particles of size dp from very large feed is proportional to the square root of the surface to volume ratio of the product p is directly proportional to square root of sp divided by versus p but sp divided by vp is equal to 6 divided by phi sdp p is equal to kb divided by square root of dp where dp is the particle size KB is a constant that depends on the type of machine and the material being crushed. This law is used for relatively less energy for the smaller product particles than Rittinger's law. The Bond's law is somewhat more realistic in estimating the power requirements of commercial size reduction machines. Now next question. Define work index. So work index is defined as the amount of energy in kilowatt hours per ton of feed material required to reduce a very large feed to such a size that
80% of the product passes through a 100 micrometer screen. If dp is in mm, p in kilowatt, and m dot in tons per hour, then the relation between kb and wi, based on the definition of work indexes, kb is equal to square root of 100 into 10 raised to minus 3 into wi which is equal to 0.3162 wi now next question define crushing efficiency so crushing efficiency is the ratio of the surface energy created by crushing to the energy absorbed by the solid the formula for crushing efficiency is eta c is equal to as into ab minus aa divided by wn where eta c is crushing efficiency wn is energy absorbed by material in joule per kg as is equal to surface energy per unit area in joule per meter square ab is area of the product in meter square a is area of a feed in meter square but the surface energy created by fracture is very small as compared to the mechanical energy stored in the material at the time of its rupture due to this most of the mechanical energy stored in the material is converted into heat and thus crushing efficiencies are low and the energy absorbed by the solid that is WN is less than the energy supplied to the machine that is W. Hence part of the total energy input to the machine is utilized to overcome the friction in the bearings and other moving parts. And the remaining part is available for crushing. Now next question. Define mechanical energy. So, the mechanical efficiency is the ratio of the energy absorbed to the energy input. Hence the formula for mechanical efficiency is eta m is equal to wn divided by w where eta m is mechanical efficiency, w is energy input to the machine, wn is the energy absorbed by the solid. So that's all about important questions on mechanical operations. In the next video, we will discuss another set of questions. If you like my video, please like my video, share this video with your friends and subscribe to my YouTube channel.